being here and being part of our family. And, um, and for those who are regular attenders, God bless you as well. Thank you for being here. And uh, while I'm on, on that subject, can we show all our guests appreciation by a huge round of applause? Come on, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Last week, I got the, um, I had the opportunity to brag on um, a few of our, our, our youth wings and their accomplishments and, um, and what they're doing in scholastics, but in sports and all that. And so I wanted to, to say it's been so good to be able to see some of our students do what, uh, the, and, and be able to perform in the talents that God has given them. Last week, I talked about Carson Rowling. I got to actually see Carson. Jade and I attended his last basketball game of his senior year because um, Wide Oak fell short in the playoffs. But Carson, we're so proud of you. You did a great job. And I uh, love to see our students out doing things, church. I'm telling you, I'm so proud of our LFA kids. Can you say amen? Um, so, Carson, we love you. And, um, man, we're very proud of you. You represent our church and God very, very well. I mentioned about our girls. Our, uh, we got some girls who participate on our, uh, at, at Trinity School of Texas, and they made it to the state championship final four, and, did a, and they fell just a little bit short. Folks, you guys would have been so proud. Um, our girls, our LFA girls, really showed up. I know the Cobb girls did very, very well. Trinity played well, and I think she's here. But um, anyway, I know they're not here. They're still on their way, trying to make their way back from Waco. But when you guys see those girls, would you love on them and tell them how good of a job they did? They represented themselves, God, and the talents that God blessed them with very, very well. They fell short, uh, but did a, a tremendous job. So we want to say thank you. I know Nicole's here. I mean, your girls were so proud of them. And so when you guys see them, uh, let them know. Um, and moving right along, I guess I'm a little biased on this one, but I'm not. As a parent, very, very proud. Jaden and their boys team won state, folks. Is that awesome or what? So, yes, very awesome. Such a cool experience. And, and to look at and see some of our LFA folk that drove all the way down to Waco to take that on, I'm telling you, words cannot express how indeed grateful we see to look at and see some of our church folk that drove down to just support these kids. It's just awesome. Uh, but yeah, they are still making their way back from Waco, so they're not here today. But when you guys see all the boys and the girls, please congratulate our youth. They really do an awesome job in anything they do. But what an accomplishment to win state. Can you say amen? Um, so awesome. And there's nothing, I know Stephanie and I, we always see the spiritual in everything. And uh, we just said, man, that awesome of all the years of the uh, dry seasons, if you will, um, our kid has been a part of some teams and some seasons where they didn't win a ball game, not just one season for years, okay? Like the best part of the season was how good the snacks were going to be because um, the games were horrible and they were not very good and never won a game. So to see the culmination of his senior year to finally win the ultimate prize in state, state finals was pretty awesome. Can you say amen, church? So thank you all very much for your support and all that and always praying for our kids. Um, what a joy that is. So, But let's get into God's word. I'm excited about where we're going this morning. And um, some of you who already been a part of our journey in Psalms 23, you already know where we're headed and um, <clears throat> looking forward to it to some degree, some are like, man, I'm not sure if I'm ready for this week because you know where we're going. Um, if you haven't been a part of our journey for the last few weeks, we are in Psalms 23, and we're just literally journeying through that beautiful poem that uh, David wrote, and um, out of experience, being a shepherd himself, how awesome is that? Being a son of a shepherd, even, how even better that is, and so... Um, speaking from experience, and we're looking at this from a shepherd's perspective, even though it's the sheep doing the talking, we are taking this from a shepherd's perspective, and, um, and, and I just love where we've, where we've been. Today, we're talking about even though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, and we'll leave it right there. We'll finish that towards the end, but let's just say even though I walk through the valley. And um, let's pray. God in heaven, thank you. Thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. It is with great fear and humility this morning, God, that I stand behind this pulpit you have given me, this platform you have given me today, Lord. 
I do not take that for granted. Thank you for your calling. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the message that you have for us, Lord. This is not Edgar. It's your word. So, God, I pray you would bless these next few moments we have together with you. Anytime we get to be in your presence, God, it is just awesome. We pray and we believe and we do expect life change today, Lord. Will you start with this guy? Start with me. I don't want to leave this place the same way I came. Our prayer today, God, I, I, I'm praying for all of us, Lord, is that when we leave this place today, we leave this place changed. And we ask all this in your awesome name. And everybody says, amen, amen. Last week, if you're able to join us, uh, we talked about how he guides us in the path of righteousness for his namesake. And I challenge you about three things, three questions that I ask you if you're willing to do. Uh, the first one is, am I willing? These are questions we ask ourselves. Am I willing to love others more than myself? You guys still with me on that? Am I willing to love others more than myself? And that, and it's, that is not natural for us to do that. And for maybe others, for some more than others, it might require a little bit more work to love others more than ourselves, but nonetheless, the rewards that come out of that, God, come on, this, how awesome is that, that God can use us in that challenge? Um, am I willing, here's the, last, the next one, is am I willing to be set apart? That's the challenge. Am I willing to be set apart? And we talked about how as sheep, when we are his, the Lord is my shepherd and we belong to him, there's a mark that's placed on our lives. Come on, church, you got to preach with me here today, folks. So this is good stuff. Because as we belong to him, he puts his mark on us. We are to be set apart. And what does that look like? What does that mean for you and I in a world that is just desperately challenging you? The instant you walk out these doors, you are challenged to compromise who you are. You're going to be compromised on what you believe, how you believe it. And all that is masked in the word that's tossed around, I think, almost too fluently, and that's the word love. But what is love? God is love. But you're challenged to be set apart, so am I willing to be set apart? That's a very tough question that needs to be answered. Can you say amen, church? If we're going to continue to be guided down this path of righteousness for his name's sake, that's a definite question we need to answer. And last but not least is, am I willing to do what he asks? Can you reach a place in your life where you can honestly say, yes, now what's the question? Listen, and, and, and be careful what you ask for, or at least what you say that, because God will challenge you. But after all, isn't it worth the risk? Can you say amen, church? So moving right along today, that's just a brief recap of where we've been just last week. Um, if for any reason you want to go back and catch any of the other messages, please do so. It's on our website. By the way, our website has been your webmaster, yours truly, which he's not, um, tried his best to try to freshen that up. There's some new things on there. The schedule for small groups is on there. Very happy to announce that. So if you want the dates, locations, Blaine did an awesome job telling you about that. So please go to our website anytime, and it's very informative. You guys could check some of those places out. Um, we actually added a small group this year. So thankful for the Saps to open up their home in Hallsville. So those of you who live in the Hallsville area, guess what? There's a small group in your area now. So please flood that house. They are more than ready to be there. Right, Stacy? Yes, yes, yes. She's already said yes. Now, what's the question? See what I'm saying, folks? Come on. Um, and I'm so proud of them because they said yes before the question was even asked. And so I'm so proud of them. Anyways, you guys check that out. But moving right along, as the shepherd, and according to the shepherd's perspective, right at the halfway point, um, in, in the journey of the sheep and also in this poem, if you will, in Psalms. I mean, maybe not so much numerically, but 
in the season of the sheep. We're right at this halfway season is where we're at. And now it's the shepherd's um, challenge to start guiding his sheep to the high country because the summer months are coming. You guys still with me? So as the sheep, remember, this is a journey these sheep are, are, are on with the shepherd. So as the shepherd has been, I mean, from the very beginning, through the seasons, where we're going, we're, as sheep, we go through seasons as well. And so now this season, we're coming out of the, the fall, uh, and we're going into now spring and into summer. And, um, and of course, here in Texas, you're used to that because there's really only two seasons, and summer's like tomorrow. And, and so we understand that so well, don't we, church? And so as sheep and as the shepherd now, we're going to take that long, long trek. And it is a long, long journey. These sheep have to go on to get to the high country, to get to the mountains, to get to the hills. And that's where we walk through the valleys because the shepherd knows, catch this, folks. The shepherd knows the valley is the best route to take to get to the mountaintop. But the valleys also come with it some extreme difficulties and dangers. Now, I think you guys know where I'm going with this this morning. And I, I truly believe that there are some of us here this morning, you guys are in that valley. And it's tough, isn't it, church? Here's... Here, please don't make this misunderstanding, if you will. Let me, let me try, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to try to clear up some things. I know the valleys can be tough. It's difficult. It's dangerous. But it's not always about death. So much good comes out of the valley season. And we're going to find that out this morning, how awesome that is. Talking about David, David understood this. Remember, we talked about this, and if you've been a part of Longview First Assembly back last year, we, you know, we went through months walking through the life of David himself. And so, you know, David knows this whole high country season very well, the summer month season, being a shepherd. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to take you back to the moment when God asked Samuel to anoint David to be the future king of Israel. You guys still with me? Say amen. I'm sure you remember that. In that season, if you guys notice, when Samuel walked up to the house and came to the house, David wasn't there. You guys remember that? David wasn't there. He also wasn't on the home range, if you will. David was up in the high country tending to the sheep when Samuel showed up. So David knows all too well what it takes to take the sheep through the valley, up through the high country, and knowing that he knows all the dangers that come with that. And we'll talk a little bit more about what all these dangers are here in the next few moments. But man, the rewards that come out of the valley church. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. The rewards that come out of the valley season, it's incredible if you're willing to go through it. Here's... um. A little Edgarism, if you will, and um, I think you'll agree to this. Every mountaintop has its valleys. Every mountaintop. Listen, as Christians, I, and I think we talk about this a lot. We even we say this. We throw this phrase out there that I want nothing more to be on the mountaintop with God. Come on, church. Do you agree to that? Some of the most powerful moments in our lives, even personally, we've talked about the missions trips that Stephanie and I used to lead into Mexico and specifically into the Baja Peninsula. And in, and in Ensenada, there's this one particular moment that we would always take our kids during this trip. In fact, when the kids would make multiple trips, this is the one moment in their life in that trip they looked so forward to. But we would take these kids up right before, right around the dusk area, right when the sun is about to set. And we trek all the way up the hill, this huge hill that overlooks Ensenada. If you've ever been down in Ensenada, down in Baja, you know what I'm talking about. We would look down into the valley, and it's just a powerful moment. And we would have a time of worship and consecration, and we would stand on that mountain. And literally for, for, about, for hours on end, we'd just sit in silence and just listen. 
And just listen to the Holy Spirit just speak. Many pastors, missionaries have come out of that mountaintop experience in our youth group. Because they heard. They heard. So, yeah, of course, as Christians, we love that mountaintop. How many enjoy being on that mountaintop? I mean, the valley is not the most comfortable thing in the world. So, yes, of course, we understand that. David understood that because that's where he was when Samuel showed up. But I want you to catch on to something. I'm going to kind of give you the end of the story to some degree, but I, want, I, I think you understand where I'm going with this. In this psalm, in, the, in, in verse 4, there's a specific word that it says that I, I want you to, to just take notice. It says, even though I walk through. You guys catch that? Simple word. We read it all the time. It's been read at, at many situations. I've, I've heard Psalm 23 quoted so much in so many scenarios, but I think sometimes we go through it so quickly we don't understand and take the time to really read what the sheep is saying. And in this perspective, from here on out, by the way, when you read Psalm 23, that the, um, the conversation flips now to more personal pronouns. The sheep is going to use more I and you in these conversations from here on out. And it's so, it's so awesome to me to hear that it says, even though I walked through the valley. Nowhere does it say there that even though I stop and die in the valley. You guys read that anywhere. I think in every translation, and I, I think you have the digital translation, there's about 3,000 translations. I don't know how many languages there is, and I've tried to look up in as many as I can, even in Spanish, and nowhere did I read anywhere where it says that even though I stop and die in the valley, God is so good. Nowhere does it say that, church. If there's any encouragement to anybody here, and please, this is for somebody here today. Please listen. That even though you're in this valley, you're going to walk through that valley. Now, we can't forget what happened last week, though. We're being guided by the good shepherd himself who knows. I'll say it again today. He knows. He knows. Those two words are powerful. He knows. Come on, church. You still with me today? He knows. But God, I walk through. Now, another reason besides the first reason, the reason they go through the valleys because it's a gradual ascent to the mountaintop. So it's a lot easier for the sheep to ascend to that hill, to the mountaintop. So that's one of the, that's the first reason. That, that another reason that they walk through the valley and then that, that valley season, I guess, the, well, the, the long trek is it's a well-watered route. Uh, it's a well-watered route. There is so much rich water on the mount, on this valley. Come on, church, you still with me today? And remember, I just said we're coming into the summer months. And those of you, and I'm so glad we're preaching this here in Texas because you understand. In Texas, in the summer, it is? You guys are preaching. Thank you, Mark. I'm telling you. Texas, summer equals? It's algebra. Come on, Trey. It's easy math. It's hot. The same way for the sheep. It is hot. And I'm talking about intense heat, thirst. A lot can happen in that. But God, on that valley, the riches, there's, there's rivers, springs, streams, there's quiet pools that they come into. The water on that valley floor is incredible. It's cool. It comes off from the melted snow. Those of you guys have been in Colorado and some of your hills, come on, you guys know what I'm talking about. That water is incredible. It's the same dynamic. Spiritually speaking, church, come on, I think you know where I'm going with this. Some of the most refreshing times I think I've ever had, and I think I speak for many of you, some of the most refreshing times I've ever had and I've ever discovered about God is during this valley season. And um, I don't need to go into details because I think all of us, our valley seasons may be different from one or another, but I'm telling you folks, 
there's something about the refreshment from the word of God, from the Holy Spirit that you get being in that valley. Nothing else is matched. I don't think we as Christians can appreciate the refreshment we get from the Holy Spirit unless you go through a dry season. You guys there with me? If you're going through a dry season right now, and I think you understand what I'm talking about, church, and if you don't, you're probably going to get there someday. It, it, scripture tells us, I'm sorry, I wish I could blow sunshine up your skirts, people, but that doesn't work that way. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm just preaching it real. I don't know how else to be. Because I'm not going to preach something that's just powder puff fluffy and it's junk. I'm not teeing. I'm, it's, there's going to be stuff. There's going to be valleys. In some of those valley seasons, it feels like you're about to die. I'm all, in all seriousness, it does. But some of the most refreshing moments I think we have ever had in God has been in those valley seasons. I'm talking about literally hearing the voice of God and quenching that dry thirst. I'm telling you, folks, if you, you've been there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's such refreshment that comes out of that. It's awesome. So, yeah, that's another reason why these shepherds will take the sheep through this long trek through the valleys is because of the well-watered route that they find themselves in. But there's one more reason, and I'm going to begin to kind of move this to another section of where God's going to take us this morning. But another reason that's so awesome is the fact that during that <coughs> trek, is some of the richest food is found on that valley floor. It really is. The grasslands that grow along that stream, the grasslands that grow along that, that river, is some of the richest grasslands a shepherd can find. That's the reason the shepherd will take that risk and take those sheep down the valley floor. Because that, that, that the, and they take, I'm telling you, they go so slow. They take their time. Because all along the way, these sheep are munching, folks. Come on. How many love the good buffet? Come on. I'm not talking Golden Corral, because that's not good buffet, folks. I'm sorry. Some of y'all been blinded by deception from the evil one. I'm telling you, Fog. I, I know I get it. It's cheap. But with that cheapness, you get anyway. You know where I'm going with that, right? There's something about the richness of food that we get when it comes to God, though, church, in all seriousness. And the shepherd knows the, reward, the rewards that come out of this outweigh the risk that you put into it. There's a lot of risk, though. Let me talk a little bit about that. In these valleys, there's some very steep wall canyons that you find these valleys in. Okay? So, I mean, I'm talking about, I wish I can visualize this for you. I mean, I'm talking about, they, it's, and you, I wish I, I'll show you some pictures the next week we're together, but I'm talking about a steep wall canyons to where if you guys have ever been canyons like that, you know what I'm talking about. That the sun rarely shines on that valley floor. Maybe about an hour or two per day will you get a direct sunlight coming down on the valley floor. Other than that, more times than that on that valley floor, it is shadows, dark shadows most of the time. And that's a huge risk. Huge risk because here's the reason why. In those steep wall shadows and in the shadows, you have predators that are there to take out the sheep at a moment's notice. You got, I'm going to sound like Dorothy here, but lions, tigers, and bears, oh my. But in all seriousness, there's, there's cougars, there's, there's mountain lions, there's bears, there's wolves. All sorts of predators hang out and hide out in the shadows, folks. Come on, now we're getting a little preachy here this morning because... In that valley season you find yourself in, some of you probably feel right now that you're being attacked right now by those certain predators. I guess nobody's being attacked, huh? I've been there. I've been there. And if we're not careful, and we tend to, and we talked about this two or three weeks ago, if we tend to kind of branch out on our own, as sheep, when we wander off, what happens when we wander off on that valley floor and get away from our shepherd? It's, it's really simple math, folks. We die. We die. And that's not a good thing. Because we have just walked out from the care of the shepherd. 
Remember, we've talked about this. The shepherd knows what? Best. He knows. He knows how to protect. He knows what's out there. He knows there might be a risk, but I know the rewards that come out of this are awesome. Because when we get to that mountaintop, there might not be as much grass areas out there for them. So I need them to feed and get rich and get as healthy as they can because another season is about to come. Come on, church, you still with me? Another season is about to come, and they know this. And remember, I told you I was going to read this for you, and I'll read it for you out of the New Testament because John tells us this. It says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. I, I told you this wasn't Edgar trying to kind of say some things out there that don't make sense. Even scripture tells us in these days we will have trouble. In these days there will be that canyon, valley, dark shadow time, but take heed, he knows. God knows. Also in this valley and in this grassy area and the risk to come with that is storms can come out of nowhere. If you've ever been, cam if you've ever been camping sometimes on a canyon valley floor, you know that that's a risk you take in flash floods. Many of us, we hear that word flash floods and your phone goes off. Your flash flood is going to be in Longview in the next three, four thousand days. Our phone, I'm telling you, our phones will be blown up. That's flash flood. I don't know where it's going to come from. We don't understand flash flood unless you've ever been on a valley floor and that water comes from, I mean, there's people who have actually lost their life because they didn't heed the warnings and come out of flash floods. It's a real thing. We don't get that here in East Texas, but folks, I'm telling you, flash flood exists. My parents can tell you that. They had to be helicoptered out of their house because they didn't listen to Edgar. When I try to tell him, yep, on the camera, I told your mom and dad, get out of the house. You don't listen when Harvey comes. They understand what can happen with flash floods. It's dangerous. Storms can come out of nowhere, spiritually speaking. Anybody, can anybody identify with that this morning? Storms can come out of nowhere. Ice, rain, sleet, rock slides can come. And come on, church, I think I can go on and on and on of the dangers that come out of that. But, but... God, but God. Church, I, I know today's experience is pretty simple, but there's something very powerful about this valley we walk in. And here, here's the reason why. If we finish reading that psalm, you guys can probably know where I'm going with it because I didn't finish it for a reason because there's the good part. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no what? Why do we not fear that? For he is with me. Let's finish it. <laughs> I fear no evil, for you are with me. Personal pronoun. The sheep is saying it. He's proclaiming it. You need to proclaim that here today. Not because of the preacher. I mean, I can't preach you out of this valley, folks. It doesn't work like that. I wish it did. As parents, those of you who are parents, for your kids, don't you wish you can just preach your kids out of whatever valley they might find themselves in? Trust me, we've wanted to do that so many times for our kids, but we can't do that. So learning experience that comes with that, we want so badly as parents to be able to do it. As pastor, I want so badly, especially when I can see the dangers you find yourself in. As pastor, I'm going back and saying, man, don't, don't, don't do that, don't go there, I tried to tell you. But I, I can't preach you out of that valley, folks. But listen, the way this psalm is written, the sheep is saying, I will fear no evil because you are with me. It's a declaration we have to come to in our lives. Is it hard? Yes. I shamedly admit to you that there's been moments where I couldn't say those words. It's hard. I'll be honest with you. If those of you have ever been in that season, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you did better than we did, then you're my hero. I'll give, I'll pass this on to you. I've had those seasons where I couldn't say those words. But when I finally came to that conclusion that you are 
with me, God. I knew I'd be okay. The water tasted good. The food was awesome. Because the word of God is so proven, folks. I'll say it again. We've got to get in his word. This is why some people, if you notice some of our more experienced, mature saints don't stress about life. You want to know why? Because they read the end of the story in God's word. They know what God's word says and his word says there may be trouble, but I will be there with you. That's a promise we need to stand on today, church. There will be trouble. There will be valleys. There is dark shadows and the predators that come with that. But church, can this pastor speak life into you? Because we have been there. The rewards that come out of the risk of taking that long trek through the valley floor, it's so worth it. Because think about it. You're on your way to the mountaintop with the good shepherd. You have to go through the valley to get there. The reward is so, so awesome. Will you stand your feet with me today?